Hello everyone, Strategist here, and we are going to cover the last of our baby making events this week. Next week we'll be moving on to Divine Quest with Dies Vienna going first, but for now, let us finish off this wonderful first chapter of our delvings into Theatu, the Gathering. I am the RNG Strategist, these are the strategies that we will cover. First of all, looking up under children, we see that there are a multitude of events for orc children. Unfortunately, a whole lot of them provide an overlap that makes some of these not even worthwhile. So we're going to quickly di dive into this. A lot of them we don't need to go into the minutia for though. First of all, we're going to go into historic orc. We notice when we go into this that we have our normal breakdown, male, female, are they orcs? It's looking for two orcs, do they breed, so on and so forth. And then our normal thing is we have a two population chance and a count C1 like other races. I'm going to point out here before I load up the other events, that is count C, as in Charlie. Going on ahead, we see that what we get is an orc child and it sets it to 400 turns before we're allowed to get a, another child. Now some of you out there are saying, but wait strategist, I know that once I had two orcs, I got them a lot faster than every 400 rounds. Under Stork Orc Diff 7, we see the exact same breakdown, except for it is only two chance, not population chance, and there's, there's no tag listed here. So you can have them repeatedly, as long as you have two orcs, which is very important before we go into the crossbreeding, because you only start with one, getting to two would then start off a lot faster, because you'll also notice that this particular one does not check for max amount of kids, max amount of people, so on and so forth. You need one male orc, one female orc, and only 2% chance. Same thing as the other one. Blesses people and gives you an orc child. So, yeah, really weird. If we go into the orc mixes, what we see is that this requires, and this is going to be important here in a second to pay attention, orc male, human female is what we're going with. There is a misspelling here, I will address it, but it does not affect anything for the event firing. Instead of child, it says chold, no chold female. It checks for no chold female, so your event works fine. Just a heads up. This one, 2% chance, again, not population chance, and D one this time. D is in Delta, not Charlie. So even if we didn't have the two orcs breeding as much as you want, that 400 event thing would only apply to an orc on orc. Orc on human, which by the way, this is checking for orc on human. Not necessarily a gender of a different race. Specifically, human. Human and orcs can breed, no other, no other races can breed with orc. It checks a different tag, and for this particular one, the orc is the male. If the orc is the male, I went to the wrong one, we see that it takes 300 turns before you can have an orc and a human breed again, and there's a 35% chance that you get the orc child, otherwise you get a human child with orc attributes. However, comma, and I've forgotten which one of these is which because there's so many with similar numbers, uh, this is an orc female with a human male. Still has D1, this one's only a 1% chance. But when we look into it, we see that it's only 200 turns before this can trigger again. So when the orc is female, 200 turns before you can get the event again, and a 40, not 35% chance at an orc baby. So what this is letting you know is basically if you want to get to two orcs and start having them pop out babies, you're going to want your chosen one, because you're going to choose the orc, you're gonna want your chosen one to be female. And then you can start propagating out orc babies like you're a damn rabbit. If we go into the other events, again, not breaking them all down too much. We have another orc listed as male. This one is pop chance for some reason. And this one has it at 200 turns, but because it's a male, 35% chance. And then the last one, back to the human being the male and the orc being female. What we have is a one pop chance, unfortunately, 
but a full 50%. So there's two for male as the orc and two for female as the orc, and the two for the female as the orc both have a higher percent chance of you getting an orc baby. And then again, once you get two orc babies, Stork or Diff 7 takes over. There is no cooldown. There is no timer. They, they, they just go to town. It's as, it's as fast as you can get lucky with the 2% chance. So my suggestion, if you're trying to go for an orc build, choose an orc, make them be your chosen, I mean, of course, make your orc be the chosen one, and then make them be female. So you can breed out as many orcs as you want, and you can have an orc Lollapalooza. Going on from that, we have the growth event. I went into the wrong one. We go, we have the growth event for the orcs, which I have summed up. To point out, there are going to be three sections in the PDF. One in the upper left, upper left, that says no adult orc and not enough loyalty. One in the upper right, that'll say adult orc or 50, 50 plus loyalty, and one below that says always. This is because orc or loyalty, like we did before with a goblin, leads to a secondary, like, main hub with similar choices and some of them have different numbers. In order to get into this other hub, you need to either have 50 or higher loyalty of the Alpha Clans or already have an orc that is an adult. If you don't have one of, the, one of these things, you have to do the other one. Sometimes you want to do an event in the earlier choice, particularly for witches, if you want one. However, both of these, and I cut off the line for make everything neat, both of these lead to the choose a crafter or choose a gatherer route. So no matter which one you do, you'll be able to get a gatherer or crafter. It doesn't change your numbers there. But going on, we see the witch tag. Witch, not mysticism, because there is a difference. We see the witch tag. The witch tag says you must have a female orc 5% of the time. And if you already have a witch, if you don't already have a witch, you're not going to get this event to even fire, regardless of that 5% of the time. Going on into this, 2% chance that they become a witch lose spiritual health and mysticism and then die and this is a bit of a bummer there are a bunch of these things that will be that will notice that penalize maximum health in the primary stat of the person in question so maybe if you choose an orc female don't go for witch you just don't want to get crippled like that if that doesn't happen 10 percent of the time you become an unliving wraith with strength witch skill pack magic user skill pack and a randomized possibility for an extra tag now I'd like to point out that that one specifically also gives you the magic user tag, which can help for any other racial events. We're already having a magic user, not necessarily just a witch, made you have higher chances of success. If you don't get the wraith, 30% plus luck. I made, I've put listed as a base of 31 because you're, I believe you're always gonna have a luck of at least one. So 31 is the number I'm going with as the minimum. You become an Orc Witch with the randomized tag. If all of that fails, then you become an Orc Witch, but you've lost a full eight off of mysticism, 10 off of spiritual health, five off of intelligence, 10 off of mental health, and 10 off of physical health. This is why I would not suggest Witch for your chosen one, because what this means is you have a 9.8% chance to become the buff Wraith Witch, which is good. It is good, but it's only a 9.8% chance. A 27.34% chance to become an Orc Witch. Together, that's like 36%. It's a little over a third to not be crippled. Leaving you with 60.8 to become that pointless witch at the end and a 2% chance to become a dead crippled, crippled witch. The, the numbers are not in your favor. They're, they're just not. This, this witch is so pointless, I don't know why the numbers are that bad. Eight to mysticism on a witch means you're not doing any purple events with her. Spiritual health, particularly this is chosen, means they're just going to die. Five intelligence means they're not really going to be good at the yellow events. And they're not going to be a good researcher. 10 mental health, going to die even more. 10 physical health, guaranteed to just be closer to death in all events. Like, that's just such, like, a 1, 2, 12 punch. You're kicking a horse while it's down. Don't choose it. I don't like that event. Teaching a child a good old trade. I'm not going to really go into these. You're just going to have to trust my numbers on it. They both have a 2% chance of you dying. Though they will become a slugger, which is the orc equivalent of a fighter. If they don't die, then if you choose gather, 98% chance to become a gatherer. If you choose craftsman, 98% chance to become a craftsman. That's really all there is to that. It says a child is strong. It should list that there is a strength tag requirement because they need six or strength. It doesn't list it. Like everyone else tends to list those things. If we were to go over normally, this would be listed as, was it strong or strength? 
Either way, you get the idea. It's missing a tag. It's missing a thing to tell you what is required for that one. You need six or higher strength to choose this. If you do choose this, then what we have is, of course, first up to die. 3% of the time become a gatherer and then die. If that doesn't happen, 10% of the time become a slugger, which is just an orc fighter. The orc branding of a fighter. If that doesn't happen, 10% plus luck, so minimum 11% of the time, an orc blood tracker, which is just the orc equivalent of a hunter. If they aren't the blood tracker, 35% of the time they do become a slugger again, but they become crippled. Minus 3 strength, minus 2 perception, minus 10 physical health. Not going good. If that doesn't happen, 30% plus luck. They become a blood tracker, but again, still crippled. Int, max health, and strength. But blood trackers tend to be kind of going off for perception, so you haven't lost your primary skill at least. But they're, they're, they're going to be closer to dying. If all that fails, they will become a gatherer. Minus one to strength, minus two to intelligence, four to destiny, four to mental health. None of those really affected the gathering stat, so I'm going to list it as a weak and dumb gatherer, but that's not necessarily bad for what a gatherer does. Though they will be kind of weak at doing research if you want them to. What this breaks down is you have a 9.7% chance to become a slugger, a 9.6% chance to become a blood tracker, 27.19 to become weak slugger, 15.65 to become a weak blood tracker, 34.84 to become that weakened dumb gatherer, but it doesn't really affect the gathering stat other than carrying capacity. There was a penalty to strength, so maybe they're good for a town. And then a 3% chance that they just become a dead gatherer. Now this brings us into, if you see orc or loyalty going into this other hub. Again, I have cut off the one that just led back to crafting and gathering. You don't need that. This one now says mysticism, and this is why I point out sometimes you want one or the other. If you're wanting to go for witch, and it showed up, over here you see one that's based upon mysticism. You don't already need a witch for it to show up here. However, you'll notice you need a five in mysticism or higher, and then there's only a 30% chance plus luck. So if you already saw witch before, you're not necessarily guaranteed to see it here. If you're wanting to go this route, you're going to want to take it. Because just a quick breakdown, I'm not going to go into all of the other ones, but 2% chance, orc wraith, uh, uh, orc witch, minus 5, minus 10. It's, it's the same numbers. It boils down the same as what we listed before. Buff wraith witch, orc witch, practically pointless witch, and dead crippled witch. If you're wanting to take your numbers and you saw which earlier, take it there. This back end, even though it has a different tag and a different prerequisite to choose it, the numbers are the same. So if you saw the one that said which, grab it. Going into here, you might not see it again. It's the same numbers, no reason why to give up your chances. Perception requires you to have a five or higher in perception to choose this is the blood tracker route. We end up with a 3% chance to become a dead gatherer. It, they broke it up again. It's if you're a uh, chosen one or not, it's dead gatherer. If that doesn't happen, 40 plus luck. So I'm going with 41 minimum to become an orc blood tracker. And if that doesn't happen, and I love this, they become a craftsman, admittedly. However, they get five to intelligence, five to destiny and three to wits. That's a good for researching. That's good for any purple stats. If you happen to like need to like, hey, I need someone to do my purple events and three to wits, which is, you know, kind of decent for craft crafting. Like that's not a bad fail state in the least. So breaking that down, you have a 39.77% chance of a blood tracker, a 57.23% chance of a mentally buffed craftsman and a 3% chance of a dead gather. The higher your luck, the higher chance of a blood tracker and the less chance you have of the craftsman. So if you're wanting to get an orc to be the craftsman, don't buff their luck. If you don't want to do the perception, we have another strength event. This one requires us on the back end to have a strength of six or higher like before. However, the numbers are in our favor for this one. So if you do see this one and you're wanting to go strength, choose to go. Choose the loyalty or adult or adult orc one to go to this and then choose strength. It's not chance based and your numbers are far better on this end. If you do this 3% chance that you become a dead dwarf, a dead orc, I'm so sorry, a dead orc who is a gatherer. If that doesn't happen, a 45 plus luck, so minimum 46% chance that they become a slugger. If they don't become a slugger, then what they become is that mentally buff craftsman again. 
Like, it's just, it's just wins all around. So, again, just to sum up that little thing, if you had the strength and you see Fighter earlier, you see, like, hey, I got the strength, but you also see that Orc or Loyalty one, choose Orc or Loyalty and then choose Fighter. The numbers are way in your favor. Way in your favor. Beautiful, beautiful. I love it. Then you have this top one, which is weird. It babbles about being a matriarch, and it also doesn't say what the prerequisite was. This one should have its prerequisite listed as well. It is female. Have to be a female to be a matriarch, of course. Just makes sense. You need to be a female. This one might be a good choice. I don't know. This one's kind of up to you. Again, all you need is female. No other stat applies. You just need to have a female. If you have a female, there is a 5% chance that they become a gather and then die. I, I grant you that one. If that doesn't happen, there is a 5 plus luck, minimum 6% chance that they become a wounded matriarch. Now, I listed this in the PDF as wounded with like a parentheses and a question mark because it's the actual sub races listed as wounded matriarch, not you've lost health, like we've seen with so many of the other orc things. It's the actual sub race that gives you wounded matriarch. If, and you're like, man, that's a really low thing. If, however, you don't get Wounded Matriarch, you still get our Mentally Buff Craftsman. Five Intelligence, five Destiny, and three Wits. Like, that that's just golden. That breaks down to a 5% chance to die, 5.7% chance to become a Wounded Matriarch, which is higher than your chance of dying, and then a full 89.3% chance to become a, like, really good Craftsman. Be between the fact that the Orcs can guarantee that they have a faster population rate than the dwarves. And the fact that you kind of get intelligence and wisdom on this. The dwarves make better pure craftsmen, but the orcs make more useful craftsmen. You, you tend to be able to get more of them. And if they're female, you can practically guarantee it. And you, you can get so many that are also good for researching. This is like the, the smartest craftsman race is the orcs. The, the, the orcs are your researchers for craftsmen. That brings me to the end of the orc race video. I'd like to thank you all so much for your support. Thank you for watching. If you if you haven't yet, please go up ahead and click that subscribe button. It would greatly help me. Next week we will be covering Dies Vienna's Divine Quest. Hopefully I do it justice. I there's a lot of things that tie into that. Hopefully I don't miss anything. Thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you've all learned something or at least been entertained. I'll catch you guys next time.